Hi, everybody. It is another episode of Masks Off. I'm Tia. And I'm Kim. And today we are going to talk about conditioning, in particular, cultural conditioning, which really takes up a whole lot of stuff. So we're going to just see where the conversation goes and what part of cultural conditioning we're going to talk about today. And the quote for today is from Danielle Laporte. Can you remember who you were before the world told you who you should be? I just... <laughs> Hi, Kitty. Aren't you saying hello? Um, I just love that quote because it's completely yeah. like we were born whole. I mean, we still yes. are whole. Yes. But we knew who we inherently were until layer upon layer upon layer, our parents told us who we're supposed to be or our teacher or our counselor or the advertisement you saw on TV when you were a little kid, when we used to watch commercials, yep. you know, the magazines you read, the podcasts you listen to even, I mean, yeah. everything, schools, religions, you know, so who actually are you? Because yeah. we're all playing these roles, wearing these masks that we've talked about, because that's what culture has told us to do and be to fit in. You know, there's that Absolutely. fitting in versus belonging that Brené Brown talks about. Yeah, what's the difference? Maybe we mm -hmm. can just quickly yeah. distinguish the difference between yeah. fitting in and belonging. Do you want to? I mean, I just, I can't remember to? exactly yeah. how Brené says it. I don't have her book handy, but basically fitting in is more you camouflage yourself exactly to blend right so that you're not um at risk for being called out or ridiculed mm -hmm. so you just want to blend in you camouflage yourself whereas belonging is a sense of belonging you are true to yourself and you're okay with you know rejecting that kind of oh i just need to fit in and you have this inner knowing, this inner sense of I belong exactly. to this world. Exactly. Yeah. And so it, that's how I think of it too. And how she kind of, you know, it's fitting in is you're with one group of friends or with your family or with coworkers and you blend in, you become who they expect you to be. Yeah. yeah. Oh, expectations. Yes. Versus belonging is when you find your tribe. Yes. Or you can exhale. I know. And just be, you know. So for me, belonging is where I need to be more and more. I mean, I still have to fit in from time to time. Yes. I mean, we live in a world where that's there. I'd love to fully release that. I don't know if that is actually mm. fully possible in the human world. I don't know. Um, you know, because sometimes for safety reasons, we have to fit in. Yeah. I'm, you know, that's a really good point that you bring up. And I never really thought about that until this moment. I think we will, I feel like I will always wear maybe a particular hat. Like when you are in the business world or corporate world, you definitely are going to maybe be respond or act a little bit differently than when you're just hanging out completely relaxed with your family or girlfriends, just because it's exactly. of the environment a little bit. But if you're truly belonging, you're not going against your inner morals or inner compass. You're not selling yeah. yourself yes. out. Yes, I love that. Right? That's the difference is to not sell yourself out. You might shift a little bit how you speak or how you act. You ever hear the, the voice when you get on the phone and you're talking to somebody and it becomes very like professional or sweet, you know, versus when you're just with your kids and you're chilling or you're with your friends. It's a different way of yeah. speaking, but it doesn't yeah. mean that I'm really changing who I am. Yes. Cause you're inherently well, and, and, and we were talking before we start recording your values. Are you still yes. in integrity inside and out? Yes. With your values and your, who you inherently are. So if we're in integrity inside and out, yes, then we're belonging. Exactly. When we're fitting in the inside and the outsides don't align. Yeah. Um, and that's where the cultural conditioning comes in. Absolutely. So we can give a ton of examples. Yeah. Do you yeah. have some that you can think of in society? Um, you get good grades, you, mm. you know, cause the kids who don't, right. They're kind of shunned in the system. Absolutely. You know, you're not smart enough or you're not applying yourself well, or maybe they're just not interested in what they're teaching. Yeah. 
but you give a different topic and that child can soar or the method, you know? So for me personally, a lot of cultural conditioning was go to college, get an appropriate degree that will get you a good job that pays well, not mm. go to college, follow your passion, follow your interests. No, that's a big one. You choose, why would you go to college and get a history degree? I mean, I'm personally, history is not my thing. I actually like it more now mm. than I used to, um, yeah. but it's not my passion, you know, but it was very clear. You get a STEM degree, you get, a t a, I mean, I did engineering, right? So yeah. guaranteed job, guaranteed good money. Otherwise, why even bother go to college? Because you're going to spend all this money and time and get nothing. And, you know, and I think of that. I mean, I'm, on, I'm where I am today and I won't, wouldn't change a thing. But it just breaks my heart mm. hearing kids who are studying what their parents tell them to study. I know. You know, so they're not even being true to themselves. You know, how many kids do you hear? I love art. I would love to be an artist, but my mom or dad don't support it. So they're trying to do it on the side and they're, that's where their heart expands. And their passion is, and they're yeah. miserable in the science classes or the going to law school or whatever, whatever it is. And can I just add that a big cause for depression is not following our heart's desire Totally. And so what I do with, when I'm doing sessions, sometimes when I, with a client who lacks meaning and purpose, I will often ask them, mm. well, what did you love to do between the ages of seven and 14? Perfect. Right. And whatever you love to do is what you're supposed to be doing for meaning and purpose as an adult. Exactly. So, you know, even if a person says, well, I, you know, I really would love to be a veterinarian, but mm -hmm. that's, I don't see that happening because, but they loved animals. They're always taking care of animals between those ages. Yeah. Okay. So you don't necessarily need to become a veterinarian if you feel like you, that's not the path to go right now, right. but what can you do where you are taking care of animals? Exactly. Maybe you can be a dog walker. Maybe you can volunteer or work at a barn if you loved horses or right. to right. still fulfill that passion. Exactly. And I love that you brought that out because I mean, we do live in a world where you have to pay the bills. You have yes. to put food on the table. So there is a place, you know, and, and it's what resonates with you and your abilities and all of that. But sometimes we have to do things we're not super excited about, but how can you bring in what you are excited about into your life? Yes. So if it is the animals or it is art, you can still have that in your life. It doesn't have to be the driver that it's your job and your, you know, career per yeah. se, you know, and because otherwise all that is, is filling more cultural expectations. You should be in a job. I mean, we're hearing that a lot yes. right now, right? You should be in a job that fulfills your passion and all of this. Well, unfortunately, not every job that fills your passion is a viable source to put food on the table. Exactly. So that's just another cultural conditioning with a more spiritual feel good twist. Yes. You know, so yeah. that's why we have to question everything. hundred percent. It's so important to always go inward and to question all the time and, and to go along with what you were saying, like between, I mean, there are many things that I love to do between seven and 14. And I think I've shared before in a couple of podcasts, like one is I used to love to ice skate, you know, and I used to think I was going to be the next Dorothy Hamill, <laughs> like, <laughs> I just can't, I crack up at myself. And then just because I could do a cartwheel, you know, I wanted to be a gymnast and because I love to sing and dance, you know, in front of my mom or in front of friends, like, Oh, I'm going to be a singer. I can't even carry a note. Right. So like those things, I loved doing them <laughs> at that time, yeah. but those are not viable sources for me right now to be a professional skater gymnast or dancer performer. Yeah, but you can go ice skating for fun. I can, absolutely. Oh. And the other thing that I love to do is play school. Mm. When, so I loved playing school, right? And I mm. loved being a teacher. And what you and I are doing is that. I was just going to say, it doesn't necessarily look like what society right. tells you it would be you are an elementary school teacher, a high school. It, yes. There's so many ways to teach and guide. 
And, and, so and perform. We have to, so yeah, we have a, we have a platform, we have an Good audience. Point. So in yeah. a sense, I'm doing the performing mm -hmm. and we're teaching. So, and when we do these Perfect. podcasts, I get so energized. I tell you that all the time. And why is that? Because that is a passion. It's like an inherent, exactly. like, um, one of the spiritual gifts, I guess they talk about, like, I loved doing that at that mm -hmm. time at that age. And now I'm fulfilling that. That's Are cool. we making money off of it? No, we're not making it's money not about that. And it's not about that. It's right. about, I feel filled up from yeah. within. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's really, um, important to just remember that, that it doesn't have to check a box of income. It doesn't have to yes. check a box of so many hours a week. It, it can ebb and flow and just be versus what culture tells us. I mean, I think, you know, another cultural conditioning, and I have another thought on the seven to 14, so I don't want to lose both of them. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll write that down. Is that cultural conditioning that you get married, you have 2.5 kids, the white picket fence. <laughs> You know, and your marriage is going to look this way as it does in all the movies. And you're going to find all those perfect friends and have the perfect, you know, oh, you're going to hang out with them on this night. And then you're going to do this and that night. That's, it's so much pressure and expectations. Oh, so much. But the seven to 14 is interesting because as you were talking about like you're growing up and as I was reflecting on my time of seven to 14, I'm curious how this generation, and this isn't judgment, it just is. This is the reality that kids right now in that age group are growing up in with technology and screens yeah. and um, you know, potentially who knows what school is gonna start to look like over the long haul. Um, but kids are inside more than they ever have been. So how, when in 30 years, 20 years, whenever, someone asked them that question, how many kids are going to be able to answer that? Because mm. it's a different kind of conditioning. It is. So it say more about that. Well, it's like, you know, now with iPads and, you know, yep. video games. I mean, we did have video games growing up, but it was the old Atari. Yeah. On, on yeah. Game. No one. I mean, it was, yeah, just di it was different, really. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was outside all the time. You were outside a lot. You know, I mean... We weren't sitting around. I was sitting around reading a book if I was sitting around. Me too. Or maybe doing some art or something. But otherwise, I was constantly on the go, constantly exploring. And not many parents just say, hey, go outside. I'll see you at dinner time. That's how I was raised. Go outside. Yeah. When you hear the cowbell, come home. And I grew up in the city. So the cowbell was just a way to just, we all had our own sounds that it was time to go home. Um, yeah. but it carried along over several blocks. So I could, you know, get home when it was time to get home. Mm. But Mike, I mean, we live in the country now, so my kids spent a lot of time out and they're older, so they aren't quite in the technology yes. realm that yes. kids today are, but it just makes me wonder, like, so that cultural conditioning of you shouldn't be on your phone or you shouldn't be on your iPad or you shouldn't be doing this, but every not everyone, but a lot of people are because that is how they connect with their friends, right? Because right. they're playing video games together or they're on FaceTime together. But how many kids on a consistent basis are exploring to figure out what their passions are with various things by just free roaming, not without safety and stuff, but just with exploring, you know, like, yeah. hey, we were able to do that. It's a very good point and a very good question that you bring up. And just Curious. like we lost what our inherent passion was mm -hmm. because then, you know, so the, one of the reasons goes from seven to 14 is like 14 is kind of when you start entering in high school. Right. And then that's when fitting competition in. starts. That's when fitting in starts. That's when, you know, yeah, all of that conditioning really starts getting ramped up. So you right. just slowly forget like, uh, okay, no time, no space, no mm -hmm. room for me to do my Dorothy Hamill ice skating anymore, or playing right. school like that. Got to get serious now, like ninth grade, right. high school, got to get ready for college. And now yeah. it's more in middle school. I think it's even younger. Yeah. 
probably in, is in some things, things, especially yeah. sports. Oh, definitely. Right. There, yeah. There's a big area being conditioned in sports. Mm-hmm. If you kids are starting so little for soccer and playing year round, playing year round, soccer, right. baseball, dance, like dance is no longer the, for the fun of dancing. Dancing right. is about competition or cheerleading or yeah. So it's starting even younger, which is very unfortunate, which is also why, again, going back to coronavirus is so brilliant because Mm -hmm. all that has to be put on pause. Yep. And so So maybe we're coming back around. Right. It makes you wonder. I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see, you know, in a couple decades what this all looks like. Um. But yeah, I mean, the conditioning is so strong, regardless I know. of whether it's starting so much earlier. I mean, it, it's starting the minute we're born, basically. Yes. You know, um, I mean, gender, a girl, just gen- and I was just gonna say, you, yeah, you put a girl in pink clothes. Well, now that we, that's sex. That's not gender. Gender yes. and sex are not the same thing. So even yeah. like these gender reveal parties. You're not revealing mm. gender. Yeah. You're revealing their anatomical sex, sex, chromosomal, or I shouldn't speak specifically to this because I'm not, I know <laughs> some, but I know it's sex. It's, it, is, yes. it is their, their DNA or chromosome yep. or whatever. Female or but male. But it's not their gender. Boy or girl. Yep. You're not revealing gender. <laughs> yeah. You're revealing the sex. Exactly. The anat- yes. The yes. anatomy, basically. The anatomy. Yes. And that, and then it, you mentioned put girls in pink or boys in blue, and then it goes even a step further. Little boys don't cry. Right. What toys you play with. What toys you play with. And little girls should be seen, not heard. Mm -hmm. Be nice and, you know, quiet, be a good little girl. Like all that is conditioning. Exactly. And that's so strong. I mean, how many times do people say, I mean, and this was a big thing for me with, with my daughters growing up, it was always like, Oh, they're so cute. And I'm like, actually, I would always counter it with, Oh, they really, you know, love to read or, you know, some sort Mm. of taking it away from that physical appearance. Yeah. You know, where how many, you know, boys were always told, Oh, you're good at sports or whatever versus like identifying that internal who are they i know versus yeah what you do versus who you are because then in in our society because of cultural conditioning if you are a boy or you are a male that has more feminine energy than masculine energy yes that's going to make your life even more difficult because now you're not quote unquote fitting in with right. the normal alpha male, right? Which yeah. you you can see it, you can hear by people's comments what people say that you know it's not okay to be a man and to have a little more female energy. I won't use the word here in this platform on what men are called <laughs> that tend to be that way. Yeah. Um and by vice other men. versa. Yeah. And vice versa. If you're a right. female if you're a woman and you have more masculine energy mm-hmm. than you do female energy and you're really strong and you're super independent and you assert yourself and you know you just i don't have that presence out that you're mm-hmm. those women some are often looked at as being a bitch again right. i won't say well you now know. they're calling them nasty women nasty, nasty woman that's all cultural conditioning. Because you know, the, the nasty woman thing right now, it's like you're not succumbing to baking cookies at home. Yeah. Speaking out, you know, using right. our voices because women are supposed yeah. to be compliant. I mean, it's thinking less of that nothing. show, do you remember that show? What was it? Leave it with the beavers or oh, something? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the 50s. Leave it to beaver. Leave it to Beaver. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? Oh, man. Wearing the dress every day with the little apron. <laughs> oh my God. First of all, just the dress in and of itself and then cooking. Forget it. 
cleaning, cleaning toilets in dress. Yep. I do that all the time. What are you talking about? (laughs) I know. Oh my God. It's hysterical. I mean, I guess we wanted to talk about this just, I mean, because there's so many layers, right? There's the beauty conditioning, what's beautiful, you know, I mean, that does a lot of harm and now, and to boys too, it's not just girls, you know, boys right now have a lot of body image issues um, as well. And I mean, there's, it just, when you start to open your eyes to the conditioning and the expectations that culture, society, parents, everyone puts on us. Yeah, it's insane. It's not, I mean, we wonder why people don't know who they are, inherently are. Yes. Because the layers are so thick and multifaceted. Yes. That to start to peel them off, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. That and I'm a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. And I'm so glad that you just said that point because we'll be talking about this in our next episode of the stories that we tell ourselves and how that ties into this cultural conditioning. Exactly. And then how the stories we tell ourselves limit us from living our true selves and our best lives. Right. And it prevents our manifestation. And it, which is the theme we've been talking about lately. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's full circle. It always is right. It's a spiral around and around. It's pretty amazing. Yes. All right. Yeah. So thank you everybody for listening and for viewing. If you're on YouTube, uh, we appreciate your support. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe or hit like, we certainly do appreciate the support. Most definitely. Have a good day. Thanks everyone. Bye.